Hello, everybody. I'm Alex. I'm here joined with my friend and colleague, Mark, Mark Carl. He is one of the core members of the Python version of the Semantic Kernel team, and he's going to be showing off how to create ChatGPT style plugins using Python. Mark, I'll patent it to you to uh, introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Mark. Uh, I've been working on the Python version of Semantic Kernel and incorporating ChatGPT plugins in our, into our code and our code into ChatGPT plugins. So if you open up a new ChatGPT chat and choose GPT-4, you can select plugins. You go to the plugin store and develop your own plugin to install a custom plugin. Ours is hosted at localhost at port 5000. So it found our manifest file for the semantic kernel. We have it installed now and enabled. So let's ask for a joke. It's using semantic kernel, our local host, and filling in the route parameter skill name with fun skill, the function name with joke, and our input is dinosaurs. It's got this response and it just repeats it back to us. Very cool. Mark, can you talk a little bit about what a semantic kernel skill is, how it fits into this uh, paradigm? Yeah, so a semantic kernel skill can use both large language models and native code and orchestrate those together to connect different types of requests that we might have. Whereas ChatGPT is just a large language model that can't interact with the rest of the world. So if you want to make a, an app, you can use the semantic kernel and then use this language interface to interact with the semantic kernel. But the semantic kernel itself can use large language models to do various things such as generate a joke or summarize a Wikipedia page, but it can also get the text of a Wikipedia page using an API, for example. So with those combined, we can use them in ChatGPT for a more powerful engine. That's awesome. And it's all pure Python. Is that correct? It's all pure Python, Python and natural text, natural language. One thing that I think that's really cool here is that you know ChatGPT is a platform, right? That you can, uh, if, if you're if you have the Plus subscription, you can interact with it by creating your own plugins, and and publishing them and getting them to to be be used here. So it gives a user of a uh, of ChatGPT, uh, the the Plus subscriber, more control or more even custom customizability over what he or she can do. So I think this is really, really cool to, to show off. Yeah, so how did I do it? So to make this plugin, I went to the semantic kernel starters repo and chose the SK Python Flask starter, which is a Flask server that allows us to execute semantic functions. But it's also a chat GPT plugin. So all you have to do to create this plugin is clone this repo uh, and follow the readme, including your keys in the .env file. And then if you're in Visual Studio Code, you can just hit F5. Otherwise, just do poetry install and run the Flask app. So I'll do it from Visual Studio Code. So from Visual Studio Code, I have the Python Flask app. Is it, and is there anything special you have to do with the Flask app, or is it a pretty standard one? It's a pretty standard app. It gives us a route to execute a semantic function, given a skill name and a function name. Otherwise, it's just serving up some stuff for ChatGPT plugins, like the AI plugin JSON, which defines our plugin, the logo, and the open API YAML, which defines our API routes. And there's only one, uh, which is this one. Otherwise, you need to fill in your API keys in the .env example file. And then after that, you just hit F5 and it'll run on localhost 5000. So our server is running here. We can tell ChatGPT where to look for our plugin. OK, so with that, hopefully you can now get started with your Python apps to build ChatGPT style plugins. If you want to start deploying them uh, locally and you don't have a ChatGPT Plus subscription, I'd invite you to check out this video to see how our other colleague, Matt Bolanos, does so using the Copilot chat app. 
Uh, Mark, any last words or tips for people trying to build a plugin using Python? Definitely just try to have fun with it and see what you can make and, and share whatever samples you can make. Uh, it's it's cool to see what the community is working on. For example, I, I'm thinking about using one of these plugins to to maybe generate some ABC notation and send it to mini generation and sheet music generation and uh, try to get the AI to write some music in different styles and combine styles and see what it can do. That sounds very interesting. Yeah, I mean, I'd love to see that plugin. With that, thank you again, Mark, for the time. And for everyone else, happy plugin creating. All right, take care.